All right, let's get started. Um, so today our topic is about high throughput sequencing and read mapping. And uh, so there's the outline for today. Um, we want to very quickly go over the different sequencing technologies. The first generation sequencing is uh, Sanger sequencing, and Sanger actually won the Nobel Prize for inventing this technology. The idea is you need to have enough amount of the same DNA, many, many copies of the exact same DNA, and we only sequence one strand at a time because the other strand is just a reverse complement of the first strand. And if you have multiple copies of the same DNA in single-stranded, then uh, initially uh, this was done in four different lanes. So in each of the tube, you add uh, DNTP, which is you know, A, C, G, T, everything, plus a, a DD, and uh, a, so in, for example, in the first tube is uh, A, C, G, T, everything, plus a DD, A, T, P. And so basically, um, with the one strand in there as a template, uh, polymerase will try to make the other strand of the DNA um, by, by incorporating, you know, in this case, C, a G, and A. But at, at each time it incorporates an A, there is a chance of incorporating the correct, uh, it, correct A, but also the uh, uh, DDATP. In this case, once it's uh, DDATP, it cannot continue anymore. And so there, there will be some molecules that end at this location because it's an A. Some molecule will end the next time there's an A because whenever the, the DDATP gets incorporated, it cannot extend anymore. And so this will happen on the, the, the first tube. In the second tube, it's all of ACGT plus the DDCTP. So anytime you stop at a C, if it's incorporating a DDCTP, it cannot continue to extend. Then uh, there will be a, a number of molecules stopping at this point, and, and so on. And so these four tubes of reactions are, are run separately in the machine. Um, and then the end the result of this tube with a mixture of DNA will be run on a gel. And depending on where this molecule ended, you can see that they stack up. Um, for example, the shortest molecule in this case is the C, is the first that it, it, it runs furthest, and then the next one is going to be a, a T, and the third one is going to be an A, and so on. And so basically, at the end, when we look at a specific gel picture, we can actually read it out if the, the, the furthest band is an A, so we all know this is an A, second base is a C, next base is a T, next base is a G, and so on. And so basically, you sequence one long molecule or one type of sequence at a time, and you, you run this in the four tubes. Later on, there are ways to kind of merge the four tubes together. So actually, the, the DD and DP, the NTP are given different colors. So they are on the same gel, but then have different colors that you can read out directly. But this is the first generation sequencing. You sequence one kind of a DNA at a time. Second generation sequencing really uh, is the the dominant technology right now, and the market leader is a company called Illumina. And what they do is something called a massively parallel sequencing. Uh, basically, you have a tube of mixture of DNA, it's whatever DNA you have, and you attach the adapters to the to two ends. And then um, there is a flow cell, which is kind of a glass slide, and you pour your DNA on top of this glass slide, and the adapter will be attached to the bottom because there are some probes on the, on the glass slide. And then um, in each location, there is an in situ uh, PCR amplification. And so you can see they, they, they kind of try to make the DNA bend over and use the, uh, the other adapter. And so because the two ends have two different adapters, you can then and it, using this kind of little bridge to amplify everything in between. And, and after they are amplified, you dissociate. And, and you can see with different cycles, so they bridge over, create a template, amplify, and then you open them up again. And with a few cycles, basically in this spot, there will be multiple DNA molecules having the identical sequence around here. And that's how they generate, um, this is called a cluster generation. So basically, you pour your mixture of DNA onto a glass slide, and each molecule in that location will try to make a few copies of itself. 
And once that's in place, uh, we can do the sequencing. And this is sequencing by synthesis. So the idea is, um, remember on this glass, or kind of a glass slide, each location will have um, one type of molecule with the same sequence, but there are actually multiple copies of it. Uh, here we're only showing, for example, supposedly this is one type of sequence. This is another different sequence. This is a third different sequence. Each of them, we're only showing one molecule. The reality is in that location, there's a cluster of molecules with the same sequence. They are in situ amplified. And so basically, uh, with, th with this in place, you flash this glass slide with just uh, one nucleotide, or, or sorry, in this case, ACGT, four nucleotides at a time. And each of them is only allowed to attach once. So basically, you cannot add two nucleotides at the same time. Basically, in order for um, the nucleotide to be attached, they, they all have to look like this, right? Um, but if the DNA, and, and so, so they, they grab onto the next one, they grab onto the next one, they grab onto the next one, that's how the DNA chain can, can really continue. But if the nucleotide you flash doesn't have this handle, then they can add to the previous one, but they cannot continue. So every time you only add one nu nucleotide at a time. So in this case, you can see uh, this particular lo location depends on the template. A C is being added here. It's different uh, DNA molecule in here, G is being attached here, and another uh, molecule, uh, another DNA sequence, a T is being attached in here. And then at this time, um, you hybridize, and you wash it off, and then shine lights on it. And because the C, G, T have different fluorescent color, in that location, you will see a different color showing up. And so they you will know, okay, this location just incorporated a C, this location incorporated a G, and this location incorporated a T, and so on. And then after the imaging, um, the dye is cleaved, and uh, also the termination groups. Basically, now the molecule is allowed, to, you can kind of give it something that the next molecule can be added now. And then you repeat this cycle. Um, now you flash the uh, ACGT again, and each of the previous template can now add one more nucleotide into this location. And then you hybridize, you wash, you use imaging to shine lights again, and see which molecule is being incorporated in which location. Uh, and, and then this cycle just repeats. And so nowadays for a sequencing machine, whether you sequence 50 base pair, 100 base pair, or 200 base pair, roughly the time is proportional to, to it, the, whole, the whole run the length of the run is proportional to how many bases you want to sequence. So if you want to sequence 150 base pair, the runtime will be about three times longer than another sequence run with only 50 base pair, okay? Um, and so um, if we look at, so there's some YouTube videos to show this. If this is an example of, you know, this is the flow cell. Uh, it's like a glass slide. And can, you can see many, many different colors in here. Um, so this is a zoom in of this location. You can see many little dots and the different color indicates different A or C or G or T being incorporated. And so you can imagine this is the original template DNA in this location. It's not just one molecule, it's multiple molecules with the same sequence. And then when you try to add a T in here, you can see here is a terminator with this in place, uh, the next molecule cannot be added. So you only add one nucleotide at a time. And when you shine lights to it, uh, this location will give out the T uh, color. And so in the first time in this, lo you can see here, if we you know, zoom in from this to now look at this, um, within this location, this spot in the first cycle, you have a kind of a blue fluorescent color showing up in here. And the second cycle, a green fluorescent color showing up, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's G. And in the third cycle, a orange fluorescent color gets incorporated, that's a C. And the fourth, in the fourth cycle, a T gets incorporated, fifth is um, a, a incorporated, and so on. So you can imagine in this reaction, at every cycle, you shoot a very high resolution image of this whole flow cell, which has millions of, by this time, hundreds of millions of spots. And it's a huge image. And every cycle, you get a very high resolution image. And at the end, as long as you line up the image together, 
you will know at which cycle which nuclear type gets added. And so with this, we can sequence hundreds of millions of uh, DNA sequence on this one flow cell at a time. And that's why it's called a massively parallel sequencing. And this is totally different from the first generation where we sequence one at a time, another one at a time. Right? Um, and so right now the, the, the market dominating company is Illumina and uh, they have a fleet of sequencers from the very small, you know, kind of baby type that you put in your lab to the really big ones that like NovaSeq that usually only sequencing facilities or uh, companies can, can own. Uh, but for example, this NovaSeq we showed on Tuesday, the capability is that you can generate about six terabytes of data per run, uh, which is about 40 billion reads and it, it's two, uh, paired and 250 base pair in length, right? And so it's really quite amazing. Um, you can see here the, the price of you know, genome sequencing is decreasing very much, uh, but recently it's kind of stabilized a little bit. And uh, it's a possibility that new technologies are still to be developed, but also Illumina currently really does not have competition. I think with competition, they might even decrease this more. Um, so the third generation sequencing is really single molecule sequencing. And you don't even need to amplify DNA anymore. Right? So in the first generation sequencing, you do need to amplify DNA and it's one tube per molecule. You amplify this many times. Second generation sequencing, you don't need to do separate them in tubes to amplify. You can pour them onto this glass slide and amplify in situ many, many molecules together. Third generation sequencing is really single molecule. Uh, basically, you use either polymerase or a pore where the sequencing is going through the pore and giving out different signal depending on whether it's A, C, G, T being incorporated or going through the pore. And this, you don't really need amplification. Um, so far, there are some technologies such as a PacBio or Oxford Nanopore, and they use, you know, like slightly different technologies. Um, you can see each of them kind of needs a kind of a polymerase type. Uh, this is a polymerase. This is kind of just cleave the nucleotide and going through the pore. Um, you can watch the videos after, after this. Um, these companies have released some pre preliminary like a prototype uh, machines or, or um, uh, reagent. They usually generate much fewer reads, probably in the order of thousands or tens of thousands of reads, whereas Illumina can generate 40 billion reads in one run, right? That's the difference. But their, their reads can be much, much longer. You can sequence a 10 kb molecule in one sequence, whereas Illumina right now is usually 100, 150-ish, right? So depending on the application, um, if you want to say now there's a new virus, you just want to sequence from the beginning to the end, maybe the third generation sequencing would be better. But if you need something that needs a lot of counts, you know, you need to know the quanti uh, quantification levels, um, then second generation sequencing is better. So that's the overview of sequencing technologies. Uh, any questions on this? <laughs> 